Have you ever wondered if we can create artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, and measure the light from stars from over 4 billion light years away? Why are we not able to reform and improve the performance of our educational system? The U.S. continues to rank 27th in the world for literacy and math skills, and many corporations have cited the underperforming academic skills in our graduates as a risk factor in the recruitment of new employees needed for 21st century jobs. My name is Jim Connor. Welcome to Game Changers Silicon Valley. This segment of tonight's show will discuss some of the new technologies making their way into our education systems. Those technologies enable teachers to teach and students to be exposed to the best methods, regardless of their location. My guests are Jan Zawadzki, CEO of Hapara, and Chris Buja, VP of Business Development for Hapara. Jan and Chris, welcome to the show. Delighted to have you here. Um, let's start with an overview of Hapara and how the application, the systems you have is helping students and teachers cope with getting a good to a great education for the 21st century. Thanks, Thanks Jim. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so we, we've come into education sort of by accident, uh, doing work in the commercial world or on Google, and we've seen Google adoption start to uh, become stronger and stronger in the education sector. So after some conversations with educators, we found ourselves sort of developing some um, tools, mostly for friends, uh, specific to education, specific to K-12, in fact. Um, discovered that those tools have traction um, and discovered that the schools that are adopting Google, Microsoft, other sort of cloud platforms um, have needs that are not really readily serviced by those platforms. And that's really where we came into being as a company, mm -hmm. satisfying the requirements that schools and teachers have in the classroom context, in the institutional context. You use the cloud services of Google, but you organize that into a front end that a school can use very efficiently. Introducing Teacher Dashboard 2 for Google Apps by Hapara. All student activity in Google Apps in one place, organized for you by class, and by student. Send files when you want, where you want, from one simple interface. Right. Correct. So mm -hmm. that's one problem you solve, which is an enormously huge problem. How do you take these varied services between spreadsheets, docs, databases, mm -hmm. mail, notes, and put it into a front end? That was one thing that it was quite uh, a big accomplishment. Next thing is how do you implement it at a school? So how did that process go? Was that a challenge to get the implementation cycle down? Well, yeah, a constantly learning process. Maybe again, okay. we worked with schools. Uh, the nice part of the, of the product is, is it, in fact, will install it very quickly. I mean, we have a, a story from our early days of the company where we had a school halfway around the world that was listening to the presentation. Saying, I understand the issue. They stopped halfway through and said, can I send you an invoice? Can we turn the second half of this conversation into making it live and active? And so that's how we came up in the first school in, in Mumbai. Um, but that, that ability to implement quickly uh, was something we've learned and can continue to improve all the time. So is it that you first take all the menial and all the administrative tasks off the teacher or make them much more easier to do administratively, then they can focus on teaching, or do you also provide some teaching uh, tools? So we're a combination of things. So part of it is taking the tasks off the teacher's plate that are not creating value. They're not creating value for the student or for the teacher. Um, this is just information management, really, for the classroom. Um, I think the second part is making it um, easier, m making the right thing to do for the teacher the easiest thing to do, right? And this is part of the other shift in education. The other part is how do we teach, right? And, and do, do we still go and live in a sort of 18th, 19th century world of, hey, here's this questionnaire, start with section number two, it's due on Tuesday. Um, and there is a global recognition, and this is true in the US, this is true globally, um, that that model probably doesn't produce the kinds of things we want and the kinds of things we expect from the workforce today. You know, we want people who, um, who know how to communicate, who understand how to collaborate, who have a, a degree of internal drive, perseverance of um, leadership. Right? How, how do we build those qualities into the learning experience and how do teachers enable that? Mm -hmm. And so it becomes this question of how do we use these amazing collaborative tools to give kids more agency, more control over what they do 
in their school life, right? And so uh, the idea is really simple. I mean, if you're doing an assignment and um, you don't like Romeo and Juliet, pick a different story. There's a few thousand stories where boy meets a girl, bad things happen. Pick one that appeals to you, right? As a teacher, should I really care? Probably not, right? As long as you meet the requirements, the, the, the goals in terms of learning, um, you should have greater control. You should be able to collaborate with other kids because we know that drives engagement. And that, in turn, produces better outcomes for students. Right. So you are really, uh, this is a tectonic shift in education. I mean, you are doing a massive rollout of uh, not only technology, but also changing the structure or the process of how education is delivered. That's my perception. And this notion of making sure that in education is individual, that individualized, making sure that the student can, you know, can actually work and select and, 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 and advocate for their own role uh, is, is actually where schools have wanted to be for a long time. So we have a lot of ed tech companies around here in Silicon Valley. It's been well known that education institutions, especially K-12, are very, are notoriously difficult to talk with and to get engaged with. How did you break through that? Um, I, th I think there are a couple of answers, right? One is if you're trying to build commercial tools designed for corporates, individuals, enterprise, and trying to enter education as a market, you'll find it's a very different market, right? It is unlike corporates in many ways. Uh, we didn't start that way. I mean, our start was working, actually our start was a dinner with a handful of teachers who basically talked about the problems they're having. So we, we started very much sort of embedded in the educational thinking. Um, and that made those, that, you know, we, we had no transition. Right? We, we came into education like that. Uh, and I think that's made a huge difference. So Chris, you have a background in education also, correct? Correct. When I, I had the opportunity to uh, launch Summit Public Schools but had been involved with a, a number of education initiatives, helping, for example, New York City design their school of the future. But my background also is was having worked at Google, and actually seen, seen those tools, and work, worked with them directly. And then in addition to having run a number of startups here in Silicon Valley. So seeing that confluence together of how to, how to build a company, but also how to, how to really get to the, the needs of teachers in the classroom, it was a very natural combination to work together with Jan. So what is, a, what is the process, what is the problem that teachers aren't effective and is... Part of my background is management consulting. Right? It's been better part of a decade in an international management consulting firm. And one of the really interesting things that um, we did in that world is look at how do projects fail, right? What makes IT projects fail? And it turns out that most of the time it's not the technology, it's the organizational change. And if you look at education, it's very, very similar, right? The, the fundamental um, block for a lot of schools is not the technology, it's the organizational change that has to go along with it. And the fascinating thing that we found with Google, um, Google was really at the forefront of taking technology that was really designed for the consumer, Gmail, that shifted towards the enterprise, collaboration, docs, etc., calendars, um, and then found a very natural home in education and in a classroom because the kinds of things they provided, right, the ability to collaborate, the fact that it's always on, uh, not having to worry about the infrastructure, having it just work in the browser, it being free, uh, just resonated very, very powerfully. Right? That in turn created this opportunity to say, well, we have technology backing to do things we couldn't do two years earlier. Where we've come in is basically being able to take that feature set and say, how do we make it more specific to the classroom? How do we address the problems of a teacher who's dealing with you know, 20, 30, 50 kids? Uh, because that requirement actually doesn't translate to the corporate world. Right? There are not too many places in the corporate world where, as a manager, you have to oversee day on, day out what 30, 40, 200 kids do. Right? Um, so again, what we've provided is the next sort of leap that enabled more teachers to use the underlying platform facilities much more readily. So it became a way to onboard teachers much faster. It gave teachers a, an easy way to, to see what's going on. Right? Because the reality for most teachers is that there are going to be some early adopters. There are going to be some people who are going to just click in. Right? They're going to go, wow, Google, Gmail, Docs, beautiful. I'm going to go run with it. Uh, but for every one of those teachers, there are 10 who are not going to spend their weekends thinking about technology. Right? Who, who who do other things. Um, and that's the challenge, right? It's not how do you bring the early adopters, because they will bring themselves on board. How do you, how do you make systemic change? How do you create an impact that doesn't drive the outcomes for you know, 500 of your kids? How do you drive the outcomes for the 50,000 kids? So how's the implementation going? Give me a sense of this. Where are you 
installed? How many countries are you in? I know you're an international company. Well, the nice news is from our first meeting uh, four and a half years ago, uh, we, we now reached all 50 states in the union. Uh, these, are, these are public schools, private schools, uh, parochial schools, religious schools. We're now at 42 countries, I believe. And, um, Do you have a language translation or different language versions for uh, all these countries? Because we work on the native Google system, it, it, whatever Google, Google language Google is operating in, the documents are organized in that, in that language. So like once teachers see it, they, it seems to be that it's a teacher-driven movement. They have to maybe get the administration to go along, but they're willing to try it out, get up and running, proof, prove that it works. Is that? It's both. It's both. So we, we very early on, we um, were primarily driven by the innovator teachers. And we saw teachers who were adopting Google, mm -hmm. who wanted to make it easier for their colleagues, who got the administration involved. Um, more and more, we're seeing an institutional path, right, where we whole see whole school systems who are going, well, we have Chromebooks, we have Google, we've got broadband. Uh, we want to start shifting outcomes. We want to start shifting the teaching practice. Right? How do we do that? And so the conversation for us changes to, um, here's how we help your teachers transition from the sort of, again, in some ways, 18th, 19th century models to um, teaching and learning models that focus on student ownership, agency, et cetera. Um, and there is evidence globally that that actually is the most effective driver of mm -hmm. change and outcomes for students. Mm -hmm. I want to ask a couple general questions. Do you feel that it was important for you and the company to be here in Silicon Valley to get this off the ground? We, we got off the ground actually in New Zealand, mm -hmm. um, came into Silicon Valley uh, as part of the Imagine K-12 incubator. Um, I think the kind of growth that we experienced uh, after coming here uh, would have been very difficult to do elsewhere. I mean, given that we were so closely tied to Google and we were suddenly one exit away, uh, <laughs> made a big <laughs> difference. Um, the ability to network with the people uh, was amazing. And uh, partially the you know, you talk about tectonic shifts. I think U.S. has gone uh, through a sort of tectonic shift in terms of enablement, right? Cloud, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, devices in the classroom. Um, things that would have been impossible to even imagine 10 years ago are now reality. Right? Kids who go to school and they all have their own device. Um, we benefited from that here. That would have been very difficult to do from outside of the country. Good, great. I'm getting the signs here that we're near the end of our conversation. There's a lot more to talk about, but uh, for the moment, I'm sure that many people in our audience are, would be uh, delighted to know more about the company, and you can uh, let you, both of you give, uh, let you and Jan give the website, and each of you give your contact information. And so we're accessible at hapara.com. That's H-A-P-A-R-A.com. Um, we'd love to hear from people who are interested in education. And your email contacts are? Uh, Chris at Abhara.com. As a business yeah. manager, yes. you're going to give the email. <laughs> Co correct. And Jan, that's J-A-N at yeah. Abhara. I want to thank you very much for coming in. I've just enjoyed the conversation. I've known you a little bit in the past, and it's been delightful to see you make this much progress in a relatively short time. So congratulations. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thanks very much. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Game Changers Silicon Valley. Each week, we'll address an area of innovation that may emerge as a game changer of tomorrow. You can follow us on our website, www.gamechangers.tv, on our Facebook account, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We look forward to your continued interest and participation in upcoming shows.